Okay, today I'm going to be testing if you can erase light. And in this experiment, I'll be showing you a very cool, cheap way to actually prove that light is made of wave-like particles called photons. So I have some of this glow-in-the-dark pigment painted on this cardboard here. So let's go ahead and test what happens when I shine red light on it and when I shine blue light on it. So for comparison, let's see what it looks like when I just shine regular light on it. So here's regular white light. So you can see how bright it gets. Okay, now let's see what happens when I shine red light on the pigment. So here's my uncharged pigment. I haven't exposed it to any white light or any other color. Charge it up as best I can. Turn off the light. Nothing. <laughs> no charge whatsoever. So in my previous video, I used a red filter with my flashlight and the red ended up charging the pigment just a little bit because the heat of the flashlight actually charged the pigment and not the red light. But you can see that the red light is not able to charge the pigment in any way here. As soon as I turn off the light, there's no visible green at all. But now let's see what happens when I use blue light. So I have my glow in the dark plate here that you can't see. I'll turn on the blue light. Okay, now let's turn off the light and see if you can see anything. <laughs> so you can easily see it glowing here. So the blue light was for sure able to charge it. So this is interesting. The blue light gets converted to green light, but the red light cannot get converted to green light. So why does this happen? And another thing you should notice in this experiment is that the blue light is only three lumens, whereas the red light was 40 lumens. So even though the red light had a lot higher intensity than the blue light, it still couldn't charge it. So that means that there's something besides the intensity of the light that's stopping it from being able to charge the glow-in-the-dark pigment. What Albert Einstein found is that when you shine light on some materials, sometimes they can emit electrons. So the light strikes the material and sometimes it causes electrons to be shot off of it. But what he found that is it depended on the color of the light and not the intensity of the light. And so basically, even if you have a very high intensity of a lower wavelength light, you don't get the electron emission, so you don't knock electrons off. And that's what led Albert Einstein to propose that light is not actually just waves, but it comes in discrete little packets called photons. And those photons have to have enough energy to knock electrons off. And this was called the photoelectric effect, and it's actually what won him the Nobel Prize not his theory of relativity. And that's what we're seeing here. In order to knock electrons to a higher energy level, you need to have photons of light that have high energy themselves. And red light doesn't have very high energy, but blue light does. And so because this pigment emits green light, in order to charge it, you have to charge it with light that has higher energy than green light. So basically, on the visible spectrum, anything that has a shorter wavelength than green light can be used to charge this, but anything that has a longer wavelength than green light can't be used to charge it. And that should also mean that you can't use this glow-in-the-dark pigment to charge itself. And that's what I found in my last video. And the higher energy you get, the easier it is to charge it. For example, if I go out of the visible range and use ultraviolet light, that charges it extremely well. So even in, the, even in the bright lights here, you can see that I can charge it easily. That's because the ultraviolet photons have plenty of energy to knock a lot of electrons up to the higher energy state so that they can decay back down and emit the green light. So why does a normal white light work so well at charging the pigment? That's because white light is composed of all the different frequencies of visible light. So basically you're not even using the bottom half of the spectrum when you shine a white light on a glow-in-the-dark pigment. It's mostly the blue and above that you use, and especially the ultraviolet light. That's why when you charge things in the sun, they work extremely well, because the sun has a lot of frequencies in the ultraviolet range that can charge the pigment. 
So we saw that red light wasn't able to charge the glow-in-the-dark pigment. But what happens when you shine very intense red light, like a red laser light on the pigment? Could it charge it then? Or will something else weird happen? Let me show you what happens. Okay, so I have here a glow-in-the-dark star that I'm going to charge with my ultraviolet light here. You see that it starts to glow really well. But watch what happens when I shine my red laser light on it. <laughs> so you can see that where I shine the laser light, it's no longer bright. Now let me do it again and show you something even more weird. So if I recharge it, it goes back to its original state. But when I shine the red light on it again, if you look closely, right where I shine the light, before it goes dark, it actually gets a little bit brighter. So watch where I, the path of this red light here, as soon as I remove it, see how bright it gets and then it goes away. And then I'll do it here. Look at the path of the light is bright and then it goes dark again. And then here again, here's the path of the red light is bright and then goes dark. And so what's happening here is not only is the red light not charging the glow in the dark pigment, but it's actually making it discharge. So you're able to erase the glow in the dark by shining a red light on it. But it doesn't just make that energy that was stored in the glow in the dark pigment disappear. It actually just makes it release it quicker. And so that's why right where you shined it, you see it glow brightly for a second, and then it goes dark. And so basically the red light is able to allow those electrons that were at the higher energy state to transition through the forbidden state and get back down to the ground state. And this ability to erase light is not just unique to red laser light, but actually any longer wavelength than green light is able to do it. So you could even use an infrared laser and it would do the same thing. But what's interesting about this is it doesn't work for all glow-in-the-dark pigments. For example, when I do the same test on lit, it doesn't erase the glow-in-the-dark state. And that could have something to do with lit's ability to glow simply due to heat. Hey everybody, so before I go, let's talk about my beard. So when you have a dark beard that grows in and a white neck like me, you can have sort of a problem. It started with people in the comments saying, hey, it looks like your face is photoshopped on your body. What's the deal with that? And I started to doubt my own existence. Is my face really photoshopped on my own body? Am I the result of some photo editing experience gone bad? But then I realized it's not me, my beard, my neck, or the YouTube comment section that's the problem. It's my razor. And that's why I reached out to the Dollar Shave Club for help. So I was never able to buy a good razor before. I never knew the difference between the different kinds of razors. And you always see different advertisements for different types of razors. I mean, after all these years of making razors, how can they still come up with a new razor? So if you're sick of your old electric razor, or you're tired of trying to figure out what's the best razor for you, then try joining the Dollar Shave Club. So right now the Dollar Shave Club is giving away their starter kit for only $5. So in your first box, you'll receive shave butter, which is a very nice alternative to shaving cream, body wash, and some butt wipes. And then you'll also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. And after the first box, the replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. So this offer is exclusively available at the link in the description box, dollarshaveclub.com slash action lab. So join the Dollar Shave Club today by clicking the link below. And don't end up in the tough position and wondering if your face has really been photoshopped on your own body like me. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. 
And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to get to them and I'll see you next time.